and thanks for joining us here on Encore. Coming up on today's show. Banana days and wishing fishes, the absurdity and surrealism of childhood is on show and at arm's reach at the Palais de Tokyo Gallery here in Paris. Strike a pose, we find out how the studio Arcourt has stayed in vogue for decades as its iconic portrait style charms a new generation. It's that time of year when children in Europe dust off their textbooks and prepare to return to school after the holidays. But before classes start up again, there's still time for a playful escapade at the Palais de Tokyo here in Paris. The galleries concocted a nostalgic trip back in time for us grown-ups with a series of exhibits exploring the joys, fears and strangeness of childhood. Etienne Mel, Roxanne Daoud and Erin Agunke went to check it out. It's hard to miss. A life-size dollhouse installed on the facade of the Palais de Tokyo Museum in Paris. With its pink walls and optical illusion wallpapers, it takes the spectator on a nostalgic trip back to childhood. I feel like a little Barbie. It's nice to have moments like this in this brutal world. It's nice to take a moment of playfulness without all the world's problems. Named after a short story written by American author J.D. Salinger, the Another Banana Day for the Dreamfish exhibition resembles the work of some 40 artists, all displaying their visions of childhood. In this room, many wood statues play with the perception of size and space. It makes us feel like giants, and we really have to crouch down to be curious, which is the theme throughout this entire exhibition on childhood. Curiosity, the desire to discover what's hidden. But little by little, curiosity gives way to the torments of childhood shattered by violence. Here, a Kosovar artist chose to recreate his primary school classroom. We're in Kosovo in the 90s, but also post-war Kosovo, where the scars are still visible. So there are both positive and negative feelings in this school. The fairy tale-like journey, conceived by French playwright Clément Cogitor, brings the fantasies and anxieties of childhood to life. The commissioners of this exhibition wanted to give the spectator a variety of ways to interpret it. We can read a fairy tale in a simple way, but there can also be hidden messages within a story that appears to be innocent. Despite the many dark, almost nightmarish rooms, the exhibition is geared at anyone between the ages of 7 and 77. In Hollywood, a star on the pavement is proof that you've made it in the business, but here in Paris, it's a special sort of portrait which seals your fame. The black and white style of the studio Arcourse photos is unmistakable and has been capturing prestigious profiles from the world of cinema for more than 80 years now. Vincent Roux, Georges Yazbek and Aurore Dupuis went along to give us a tour around the studio's latest exhibition. Edith Piaf, Keanu Reeves, Marlene Dietrich. Over the past 80 years, the world's rich and famous have posed for the cameras of Arcor Studio. In this private mansion in the posh neighborhood of Western Paris, the photography studio continues to work its magic with its glamorous black and white shots. Oh, look at this, they've um, rolled out the red carpet for us. Hello, Agnès Brouard, thank you very Hello. much for being with us on Welcome France 24. Thank you. Well, tell us more about uh, Studio Arcourt, tell us more about its history, because it's all started in 1934, it's come a long way. The studio was created by Cosette Harcourt in 1934. Her portrait hangs high in the hallway. Cosette had previously studied photography in other studios, and when she met the media gurus, the Lacroix brothers, she sees the opportunity to create her own studio. At the time, there was a boom in the industry, and photography was used as a tool for women's emancipation. Should we take a peek? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Hi. 
Hi, hello. <laughs> Hi, Hello, nice to, meet, nice to you. meet you. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. This Please is great. Sir. Yeah. So what's really impressive here is that there's no flash photography. How, tell us how you work. It's the cinema lightning. It's like a sculpture. It makes, it will take out the, the volume of, uh, of the hair, of the face, of the shoulders. It's what makes this uh, beautiful uh, three dimension pictures. So tell us how exactly does this lighting style work? The first thing we have to do is to uh, search the best uh, side of your face. Turn to the other side, please, and look at me. Yeah, both are nice. <laughs> what it's important is to keep your back straight. This is very important for me. We will try for you a lateral light. So, less, 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 there. That's nice, okay. Uh, go up a little, in the, a little up. There, there, there. This can change with every model. With you is to have your eyes both, to see the shine in your mm. eyes, okay? We will put the back uh, lights. You have dark hair, so we have to go a little stronger. Like, okay. smaller. Yes, there, there, there. A little more, a little more. Smaller, you can. Okay, there. Look at me here. Perfect. We have the picture. So you've been working here at Arcourt Studio for 10 years now. You've seen many, many celebrities. Tell us, who did you enjoy working with the most? I have a very good memory with uh, Kate Blanchett. The, she was so, uh, so professional, so open to, to, the, to the experience. She didn't try to manage anything. She was so uh, listening for what I was saying, what I needed. And this was uh, great. That's the thing, though, when you work with professionals like that, how do you make people's personalities stand out through your photos? This is the most important part. The lights, we know how to do it. But the most important part is the contact with the model. Some people are very difficult to show what, what they want because they are scared, or some, even the stars, they, are, they feel so... Uh, confident and they know what to do exactly, where to move. Uh, and this is also a problem. For yeah, because it's almost too fake. Yes, right. of course. So in both cases, the work of the photographer is to go inside to try to search something else of what people are trying to show. Thank you so much, Andre, for that photo. Thank you very much for your time on France Cat. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Cost of a studio shoot, 400 to 24,000 euros. The photography giant has lived through golden ages, but also through economic crises. It went bankrupt twice in the 90s and in 2007. In a bid to survive, Arcor turned to advertising and business portraits, opening its doors to ordinary clients. Well, the studio is constantly adapting itself to social, technological changes. And right now there is a temporary exhibition on display and it's dedicated to millennials. And it's not just all about movie stars. Even though the studio is more than 80 years old, we wanted to show that we had continued our work, taking photos of young talents in various fields, sports, cinema, music, and literature. So who is that? That's Meva Amadouche. She's a super featherweight boxing champion. It's not a well-known fact, but sportsmen have always come to get their portraits done here, including the boxer Marcel Cerdan and the racing cyclist Louis Bobé. Nowadays, though, there's more publicity around them than before. Ah, and this is a famous uh, French footballer. Yes, Raphael Varane played for the French football team. And we took that photo earlier this year, just before they won the World Cup. And this, I believe, is an upcoming uh, fashion designer. This is Olivier Roustan. He's the creative director of Balmain. He's done well for himself at only 32 years old. Well, thank you very much, Agnès, for being with us. Thank you for giving us a tour of Arcourt Studio. Well, the portraits of the rising stars of the 21st century will be on display until the 31st of October.
We're finishing the show with a more eclectic selection of faces thanks to the Portrait Festival in Vichy in the centre of France. Here, family shots sit alongside celebrities such as Tom Hanks and Kurt Cobain, thanks to American photographer Mark Seliger and his decades of work for magazines like Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair. That exhibition runs until September 9th. Do remember you can get more arts and culture on our website and you can also keep up with Encore on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Stay with us on France 24. There's more news coming up in just a moment.